Our next guest is an Emmy award-winning actor you know from Perry Mason, A Beautiful Day in the Neighbourhood and The Americans. We love him here at this show. It's the delightful, the ever-charming Matthew Rhys is on the show. There he is. Look at this. What's wrong? Why are you shaking your head? Because it was worth coming on for that intro alone. I can leave now. Well, uh, well I, please don't, because we could really use the time. Um, what? Well, yeah. I, I, I apologise for my looks, first of all. I'm just catching a, a glimpse of how badly my hair looks and the fact that I didn't put a suit on. I feel, I feel like I've let you down. No, you haven't let me down in any way, but what you have done is alleviate my first question, which was going to be, how have you been coping through the pandemic? But I think this beard tells us everything we need to know. <laughs> everything you need to know about how I have or possibly have not coped with the pandemic is, is on for show. Now, I've got a photo here of this is how you looked when we first yeah. met. We worked together in 1999. Here's Matthew yeah. Reese in the film here. Look at that. <laughs> there he is there. And this is, me own... in, this is me in the very same movie. Look. <laughs> Look at us. How old were you when, you, when we shot this film? 12. <laughs> how old were you? I'm not... I can't, well, 99. So I'd have been like, I guess, yeah, 20 odd. Yeah, 19. 20 odd. And look, look, look at us now. Look at us I now. Look like, I look like Robert De Niro in Cape Fear, and you have a show of your own <laughs> on that show. What do you remember? I've got great, I've got really fond memories of shooting this film. Do you? Yes, I do. I mean, the cast was incredible. It was Stephen Fry, David Thewlis, Tom Courtney, Charlie Lou Hunnam. Lou. Oh, the young Charlie Hunnam, of course. Charlie Hunnam from... in his first movie. Yeah, straight off Queer as Folk. Yeah. What happened to him? I know. Really went... <laughs> I just, yeah. Such I... a bright start. Yeah, a bright start. <laughs> bright start, and he's also... He, he just had that terrible thing of getting less and less attractive as he got older. Oh, That's the problem. I know. That's the, the problem. The stick just harder as the years wore on. <laughs> Well, I loved it. I loved working on that film so much. And I, I, ever since that day, I've, had the, I've just had such great affection with you. And I'm always quite annoyed that when I came to Los Angeles, you moved to Brooklyn. Do you remember, the, do you remember that time when you, when you presented the Tonys and I had my newborn son with me? Yes, it was beautiful. And I said, and I said, I said, oh, you, said you said, oh, I just had a baby. Look, do, do you want to see my firstborn son? You went, not really. <laughs> Followed up by saying, they all look the same. <laughs> you know, it's a baby. Like, yeah. Bring him back when he's That's five, exactly. you know? Hey. Then he'll have something about him. <laughs> yeah. You were right. Now, you're in Brooklyn right now, and obviously we've both been trapped in America, not being able to go home. You are a very proud Welshman. Do you hear the valleys calling? Are you desperate to get back to Wales soon? I, I am desperate. Yeah, I am desperate. I, I usually go back once a year, and obviously we haven't been able to. Um, so yeah, I do. I do get homesick. I miss. I miss the little things about about home. So it's been. Yes, yeah, it's, been, it's been. It's been hard. It's been strange. I'm not sure. I, it's hard to to describe to Americans quite how fierce uh, the and how deep the rivalry between Welsh and English goes. But didn't you once get in trouble? Weren't you playing an Englishman in a movie? And you had to shoot some of it in Wales. I remember this story. Oh no, it's far it's far worse than that. I was playing a Welshman, and this almost cost me this almost cost me going back to my own city, to my own country. I was playing. So for those audience members who don't know, uh, the rift and the rivalry between the English and the Welsh is, is as fierce as it is ancient. And I was in a, in a I was playing in a movie where two brothers go out into their backyard, and the younger brother pretends that they're in the national stadium and Wales is playing England. And then it goes into his imagination and lo and behold, the camera sw swirls and we are in the national stadium in front of a capacity crowd of 75,000 people and he's in the, in the Welsh kit and I'm in the English kit and it's his, it's his dream. And I just thought they'll do this, it'll, green, it'll be green screen, it'll be, you know, they'll, they'll CGI all this. And the director comes out and he goes, oh, great news. Uh, the, the Welsh Rugby Union has allowed us to film in the halftime of a Welsh game so John Paul will run on in, in a Welsh kit, and you will run on in an English kit, oh, wow. and you'll play, the, and you'll play this kit, a little game. And I went, what, what, what? Sorry, what, what do you, what do you mean? I could, 
how can you get killed for this? I said, can I wear like a, can I wear a Welsh jersey underneath the English jersey? They went, no, we can see that. So in front of 75,000 people, the announcer at halftime goes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a fantastic little moment for you now. A uh, feature film is being made uh, whereby two young boys are going to play, one representing Wales, one representing, representing England. Please welcome onto the pitch, representing Wales, John Paul. I can't remember his last name. Ah, uh, crowd goes mad. And representing England, please welcome Matthew Rees. And I ran on and I thought I was going to get killed. I bet. You, as you can... I the bet. The torrent of abuse... I mean, I, I don't want to, you know... It was... I still... I still get it as you're that who came on, ran onto the pitch in an English jersey, and for 15 minutes, I had to take 75,000 people shouting... Wank! ..an enormous <laughs> amount of people. <laughs> and I haven't... I haven't forgotten it, and a lot of people don't let me forget it, which is worse. Well, I want to talk to you about this. I want to talk to you about boats, cos it's kind of a dream of mine to own a boat at some point, and you've... you've done this. You've bought... Uh, you've been restoring a boat. Why... what inspired you to buy this boat, and when... is it... is it close to getting on the water? It's on the water. And... Is and... It? and it's an interesting question you ask, what inspired me, because... Where I, it's a... it's a question I ask myself most nights, and whether it was that I hit middle age and suffered a middle age crisis, whether or not in a moment of, of stupidity and, and uh, overindulgence in Scotch whisky, I saw this boat on eBay, which is a rare boat, and I am a very big Ernest Hemingway fan. It's the same class of boat that Ernest Hemingway had. It's built in the 30s in Brooklyn, and I had this wild, stupid vision that I could restore this classical wooden motor yacht to its former glory. <laughs> and, and have my family use it. Now it'll be put to charter, uh, but now that it's in the water, because it's been close to a disaster, pretty much a nightmare. Why? Why has it been a nightmare? What? Ask me, James, what do I know about boats? What do you know about boats? Nothing. <laughs> so who restored it? Or in oh, Yes. Who restored it? Yes. I was fortunate enough, I found this incredible captain uh, by the name... Oh, I've dropped. I've dropped <laughs> in many ways. Not, not just ratings, I'm balancing it on children's toys. Sorry, <laughs> Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear let me down, then. Um, yeah, I, um, what was I boring you with? Oh, yes, I got this incredible captain, Captain <laughs> Kelly Farwell, and she guided me through, and she helped, three-year restoration. So it's been many hours, many tears, many YouTube videos, and many phone calls to her going, how do I do this? Uh, but she's in the water, she passed survey, and she'll soon be ready to be chartered in the New York area. Uh, now, let's talk about your brilliant new series, Death and Nightingales. For anyone who doesn't know, tell us what it's about and who you play. It, it's a heavy... It's, sorry, I should start with a heavy, heavy... It's a heavy one. It's an intense drama, shall we call it. Yeah. Um, the, between myself, Jamie, um, Jamie Dorn and... Uh, and Gary, with this, this, this intense triumvirate set in um, 19th century Northern Ireland, where I am the, the, the stepfather to this young girl who gets embroiled uh, with, with the dashing Jamie Dornan with some very disastrous results. Uh, I always find it hard not to give away the ending, so I have to be careful with my wording. Well, you, as ever, are brilliant in it.